Hope everybody is well on this Tuesday afternoon, still unwinding from the game. In case you weren't online this morning, already have one 49ers video up. That one is about Jimmy Garoppolo's excellent play over the past three weeks. He's right at the top of the league rankings after the 49ers made a significant adjustment and have been running Garoppolo on his passing attempts out of the shotgun 96% of the time. You know, Kyle Shanahan's big into the play action, big into the under center game. Well, Garoppolo passing, they've gone from 66% shotgun to 96% over the last three weeks, and it's coincided with great play. So I discussed that this morning. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for all uh, this 49ers discussion in case you missed that so you don't miss it again. But uh, right now, we're going to talk about the 49ers secondary, another position group of great interest on this football team for good reason. Uh, the secondary is very important, and for the 49ers, it's been struggling a little bit, so they're trying to pick it up, and I think they really did pick it up against the Rams, who came into yesterday's game leading the NFL and EPA per play to the air. Their passing offense was the most efficient in football. It's no longer the most efficient in football because of how the 49ers played them defensively. Now, I thought that it was going to have to be a bend but don't break game, and the 49ers bent a lot early, and they even broke on that first Rams drive post Jimmy Ward interceptions, but then it evolved into a game where I thought the the longer it went, the more the 49ers defense asserted itself coverage wise because the pass rush still isn't great, but coverage wise, the 49ers asserted themselves against Matthew Stafford and the Rams. Now, the 49ers did benefit from a handful of drops from the Rams, but I thought the coverage technique was really good for the 49ers, and most importantly. Because I think we can all acknowledge and realize that this 49ers defense is not going to be the 2019 unit because th there have just been too many injuries. There's been too much of a talent drain. They're not going to be that overpowering unit. They're going to have to be opportunistic. And I thought that we saw that opportunism on display. And that is the big takeaway from this football game. When you... Look at the formula for the 49ers to be Super Bowl contenders this year. They're going to have to be an overpowering offense. They're going to have to win games by hogging the ball offensively and by converting that time of possession into points. Well, guess what? Right now, the 49ers offense is number three NFL DVOA. They're ranked number three DVOA. And that is, you know, in large part because they've been really good on third down under Jimmy Garoppolo, especially in the game yesterday against the Rams. And they've been the top red zone team in the league. 79% of the 49ers red zone possessions have turned into touchdowns. That's by far the best figure in the NFL. So the 49ers offense is on track to carry its part of the bargain and make the 49ers true contenders. That, that was the formula against the Rams. The 49ers executed it. For the defense to carry its half of the load, it's going to have to generate takeaways. And yesterday, Jimmy Ward generated those takeaways. 49ers were plus two in the turnover department. Jimmy Ward interception early. Jimmy Ward, a second interception early, turns into a pick six. I cannot overstate how important Jimmy Ward is to this 49ers defense. They did not have him against Arizona. They had him against the Rams, and you see what an eraser he is there on the back end. Stuff that you can't even think of, Jimmy Ward fixes. There are so many issues that only exist if Jimmy Ward is not out on the field, and I think that that was very apparent against the fighting Colt McCoys and the Arizona Cardinals, who absolutely embarrassed the 49ers, even though they didn't have Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, or Chase Edmonds. That was a Jimmy Ward-less defense, and we can see why having Jimmy Ward on that back end is so important. If for nothing else, the tackling. The guy is the best tackler on this 49ers defense outside of Dre Greenlaw. And, you know, I'd even put Jimmy Ward up there with Dre Greenlaw. So technically, in that game against Arizona, the 49ers were missing their two best tacklers on defense and Jimmy Ward and Dre Greenlaw, and it really showed. Well, they got one of those tacklers back, against the Rams and the 49ers missed only one tackle all game. 
Here's the thing about Jimmy Ward. He's underrated because we base a lot of our casual football ratings, especially of defensive backs, on interceptions. And those two picks for Jimmy Ward were his first interception since Barack Obama was president. The most recent pick for Ward was a pick six against Chicago back in 2016. It was also when Trent Baalke was the 49ers general manager. So it had been a long time. It had been several contracts, several injuries for Jimmy Ward, several coaches. The 49ers, well, I guess two coaches in 2016, you had Chip Kelly, but Kyle Shanahan took over in 2017. 49ers had to test out the waters with Jimmy Ward under the new regime because he was getting hurt a lot. He proved his durability in 2019, and the 49ers signed him to his longer-term three-year deal. Fast forward to Monday night's game. Jimmy Ward had been generally available for the 49ers since 2019, been one of their best tacklers, had been a great communicator and an eraser in the back of their defense, but he still needed those interceptions to get on the map, and that's exactly what he did. You know, I thought it was fitting. Odell Beckham, the Rams, it seemed like they were trying to force feed him early in that game. Jimmy Ward was smart. Jimmy Ward was ready over the top, picks off Matthew Stafford. Bad pass, by the way. Jimmy Garoppolo outplayed Matthew Stafford in that game. Just a footnote uh, for all the offseason hand-wringing about Matthew Stafford and the huge upgrade that he might be. Well, the Rams aren't so sure after the last couple of games um, about where their season is going to go offensively. They need a course correction from Stafford who has not impressed against some of the tougher opponents on his schedule and the Titans and the 49ers over the past two weeks. But Jimmy Ward was there to victimize him on the first pick, and then he victimized Higby on that second one. They, they went off of Higby's hands, and Ward took it back. You know, it's better to be lucky than good sometimes, but it's best to be lucky and good, and Ward obviously was. So two interceptions, Jimmy Ward should suddenly be on the national radar, and it looks like he's pairing well with Talanoa Hufanga. Hufanga, that was an excellent, critical coverage play on Daryl Henderson when he knocked that ball away. Hufanga's a physical guy. He's not afraid to cover in the box. He's not afraid to use his body as a missile in run support. You know, I thought his film was reminiscent of Fred Warner's in college in that uh, you, you know, the, the hunger and zeal with which Hufanga covered was notable. Now, he's not nearly as heavy or big as Fred Warner, so he's not going to be a linebacker. He's going to be a defensive back. But he's zealous enough to play as a box safety, and he laid the wood in the box just on time yesterday. And I think you're seeing a natural progression, a natural growing curve for Talanoa Hufanga, and it's significant because if the 49ers are going to compete this year, they're going to have to deliver at the margins and to deliver at the margins their draft class is going to have to come through with some significant contributions the strong safety spot is a great example jaquaski tarts currently hurt tarts a great communicator tarts great for the 49ers in the back end but where are the 49ers going to find a depth to be able to fill in for tart while he's out and your answer is this 2021 draft class I think that Hufanga, just like everybody in the 49ers secondary, had some lapses against the Cardinals, but it's forgivable because Hufanga is a rookie, he's a fifth-round draft pick, and he's going through the growing pains. But everybody seemed to really be on their P's and Q's after you know that Rams touchdown drive on Monday Night Football, Hufanga included. The game isn't too fast for him. He's definitely acclimating speed-wise, and you can't really teach that physical want to that Talano Hufanga brings to the table. Obviously, another USC defensive back with long hair, Troy Polomalu is, is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's been a guy that's been in Talano Hufanga's ear, and the 49ers would be overjoyed if they got the same mentality consistently from Hufanga. And I think they're starting to get pieces of that mentality. It's that hair on fire, not afraid to be physical mentality. The 49ers have had defensive backs that they've drafted high, Akella Witherspoon being one of them, that have just not had that physical gene, right? They, they haven't been able to translate physicality to the NFL where it's a lot harder, where the bruises hurt a lot more. And Talanoa Hufanga 
has not been afraid of it. And that, that's the big news. So he's paired well with Jimmy Ward. Yesterday, the 49ers ran a lot of three safety stuff when the Rams got desperate. So you saw Tony Jefferson back there as a single high. Jimmy Ward obviously would stay in the game because you don't take Jimmy Ward off the field. And Talanoa Hufango would get to do his thing. It's all great for the 49ers and uh, you know their integration of this, this exciting player. You talk about rookies, the natural question moves to Diamador Lenore and Ambry Thomas. Well, when do we see a little bit more of them? We haven't seen hardly any Ambry Thomas yet. Lenore we saw through the first three weeks and then nothing since then. Lenore was really good against the Philadelphia Eagles in week two, but he got exposed against a good quarterback in Aaron Rodgers in week three. Again, no shame there. Lenore is a fifth round draft pick, so it's going to take some time for him to develop. It's going to take some time for the 49ers to be comfortable with him on the back end. And I think right now, especially after the performance against the Rams, the 49ers can rest easy that the front line of their secondary is not looking terrible. I know there's a lot of disdain for Josh Norman. I know that people are lukewarm on Emmanuel Mosley. But after that performance, technique-wise, I think Norman was fine. I think there's always a lot of consternation about the personal foul against Arizona, but it's one play, and the 49ers aren't going to let go of a, you know, somebody, a, a veteran, even if you call him a stopgap, they're not going to let go of a veteran presence in the secondary that's playing decently well outside of that one play. Now, they aren't going to hold on to guys who aren't playing well, which is why they waived Drake Kirkpatrick today. Drake Kirkpatrick was victimized by two, you know, very <laughs> embarrassing physical efforts. Let's put it that way. He was on the receiving end of uh, two very bad plays for the 49ers. One when Michael Pittman went up right over him and grabbed a touchdown to seal the, the win for the Colts few weeks ago on Monday Night Football, and then when Eno Benjamin truck stick Kirkpatrick into the end zone. So the 49ers weren't about to deal with Drake Kirkpatrick anymore. He just wasn't giving them enough replacement value. But Josh Norman, he's still giving them decent stability at one of those cornerback positions. Again, you can't just emotionally think that the 49ers are going to cut somebody based on one personal foul. That The more that comes out about that, it seemed that Cliff Kingsbury and Josh Norman – uh, we're, we're more joking around with each other than anything else. So I mean, I'm, I'm not going to look at that play in a vacuum. I'm not going to defend Josh Norman. I'm here to explain the 49ers thought process though. And if you look at the 49ers secondary on the depth chart right now, they're more than happy to have Josh Norman and Emmanuel Mosley as their two starting cornerbacks. You're, you're not going to find a, uh, a higher floor at this point of the season in free agency or wherever else you look. And you're not going to find it yet with the Amador Lenore or Ambry Thomas, but you also have Dante Johnson. He, he's a guy that they think is a higher floor veteran as, as a, as a, a reserve, but obviously Dante Johnson is not a high ceiling guy, even if you believe that there is some kind of floor there. So with the waiver of Drake or Patrick, it moves the Amador Lenore and Ambry Thomas right up to knocking on that door for playing time. Yes, the 49ers might still go with Dante Johnson before either of those two rookies, if Norman or Mosley is ever unavailable. But I think that we're just creeping closer and closer toward that spot where you do see meaningful playing time for the 49ers rookies. Now, the last that we've seen of either of these two on the field, Lenore has been ahead of Ambry Thomas, so... I would think that he would get the first crack at it. But progress is all that matters. And the 49ers are tenuous at a few spots on this roster right now. But this game against the Rams, I think, really proved that it's a strong roster. There had been a lot of talk. Oh, this is not that strong of a roster. Not a lot of talent. 49ers should punt the season. What are you talking about? They just blew out the Rams 31-10. to 10. You only do that if you have a strong roster. But it's tenuous at certain spots. One of those spots is right tackle post Mike McGlinchey injury. You hope that Jalen Moore can lock it down. You eventually hope that Aaron Banks can grab right guard so that Daniel Brunskill can rove around and, and be a utility offensive lineman. 
if that works out and a Jalen Moore works out a right tackle, 49ers are looking good on the offensive line, even post Mike McGlinchey, right? Other spot that I would be concerned about is edge rusher. He Ford's out. You don't know how long. It might be forever with the back. I mean, it's just really tough to gauge. 49ers aren't getting enough from Sansa Mebicom. They got a little bit from Charles Omenehu, key pressure from Charles Omenehu in uh, one of his few snaps during a Rams field goal drive. And that key pressure actually forced the field goal because it forced Matthew Stafford to check down um, instead of going downfield on third and 13. So Charles Omenehu gave the 49ers a little bit. Arden Key gave the 49ers a, a very nice sack going over left guard. Uh, Chris Kacarek lined up Arden Key. He's a lighter edge rusher on the inside. That's the kind of stuff you can get away with on – uh, in a game where you have a big lead like the 49ers did against the Rams. So can the 49ers scrounge up enough edge firepower opposite Nick Bosa between Sansa Mebucom, Charles Amenehu, Arden Key, and Jordan Willis to make the defense really click? We'll see. That's a tenuous spot on the roster for me. And another tenuous spot on the roster for me is obviously the secondary. But I think it's tenuous depth-wise because if the frontline guys stay healthy – because, I mean, M Mosley, despite the fact that he can't hold on to a pick, uh, he seems to be in good position now more often than not. Mosley, Norman, Jimmy Ward being the glue piece, Tano Ofanga and Jaquaski Tart when and if he comes back. Frontliners, they seem fine in that secondary for the 49ers. At the very least, that's a unit that the 49ers can, can cobble together effectiveness from, right? They just need to be opportunistic on defense. They don't need to be world beaters if their offense is delivering at a top five level, which it did against the Rams. And, you know, I think there's some optimism that the 49ers offense can continue this role moving forward. They're just now finding their identity and they're going to enter a much weaker portion of the schedule. 49ers schedule, according to DVOA, the rest of the way is third easiest in all football. So you need top level offense and opportunistic defense. And that's why I think the 49ers are fine with the frontliners at cornerback and at safety right now in the secondary, but they need Lenore and Thomas to be capable depth by the time that this season's over. And I think they're working toward that. It's hard to know until we actually see one of them on the field. Maybe we won't actually see one of them on the field, but it's more likely than not that an injury situation will rear its ugly head and we'll see if Lenore or Thomas are making that progress. So, in summary, Jimmy Ward, so important to this 49ers defense. Tano Ufanga making his climb up the depth chart. Lenore and Thomas with Drake or Patrick being released. Uh, those guys are very quickly approaching the on-deck circle for the 49ers. And that's all good roster progression because the 49ers are going to need delivery at the margins, and delivery at the margins is going to come from their 2021 draft class coming through. And we'll see if that continues to progress. I think it is. I think that Drake Kirkpatrick waving means that the 49ers are starting to have some future-facing confidence, if you will, as we move forward following their big win against the Rams. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. More videos coming this week as the 49ers move on to Jacksonville, looking to improve back to 500. Everybody take care.